Welcome to this edition of the OpenMW Release Commentaries. The OpenMW team is proud to announce the release of version 0.46.0 of our open source re-implementation of the engine behind games such as The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. Many exciting new changes are to be found in this release, including but certainly not limited to real-time shadows, a powerful new navigation system, a giant number of mod compatibility improvements, and a larger cliff racer aggression distance. Breaking the record mentioned in the last release commentary, this version sees over 270 issues closed, making it the biggest release in the five years since 0.37, the release that saw OpenMW rewritten from Ogre 3D to Open Scene Graph Libraries. And this video will give you an impression of what you can expect in a new stable build. But first and foremost, here's a quick look at the feature many have been waiting for beautiful, real-time shadows. I'll be taking a deeper look at Shadows in just a bit, but let's first take a quick look at some nice bug fixes and improvements users can expect from this release. A lot of hard work has gone into pathfinding, which has seen major improvements. For example, in previous versions of the engine, one would have seen guards endlessly attempt to walk through a wall, while now they will go around, over, and under obstacles to find the player. As you can see, a hostile NPC would be completely blocked by even the most basic of obstacles. Can you see me? Hi guys! Wow, this is almost fun. Now, thanks to the usage of the free and open source recast toolset, our engine can generate navigation meshes, something familiar to Skyrim players, on the fly. Coupled with other recast navigation functionality that was integrated, they allow characters to gracefully walk around walls, over hills, and generally navigate the way they should. Oh, gotta run. You make this too easy. You won't escape me that easily. Unfortunately, OpenMW is not a pixel-perfect recreation of Morrowind. Observant players of Morrowind replaying the game in OpenMW may have noticed that there's something... missing in their final boss fight. Dagoth Ur actually has a shield ability on him, but you couldn't see it in the previous version. Now your favorite god will have a nice visual effect that you could see in the original game. Previously, Werewolves would shield their eyes in an ash storm or a blizzard, which looked quite interesting, but, uh... It's clear from our lycanthropy specification, the Blood Moon expansion, that werewolves don't need to protect their eyes like puny myrrh, right? So, here we go. On the previous episode of OpenMW Release Commentaries, you may recall from our last release video that light source flickering became more pleasant in 0.45.0, but this time... 
it became more pleasant with 0 0.46.0. Let's take a look at 0.45 again. Notice something off about that lighting? While the previous attempt to make light flickering look better was only an approximation of the vanilla flickering behavior, now it's much more in line with the vanilla look and feel, thanks to the accurate Morrowind research we have received from the community. Nice. Did you ever find yourself marveling at the forests of Skyrim, only to behold this sight? It's not likely you did for various reasons, but anyway, this release includes a fix for movement accumulation handling that allows the intended behavior for this little pup to play out. Ouch! That's better. We've mentioned NIF support improvements in the previous release videos, and this one is no exception. Nye Roll Controller, Nye Switch Node, Nye Palette, and Nye Tri Strips NIF record types become a thing in this release. Nye Roll Controllers make nodes spin. Nye Switch Node allows the engine to switch between different node states provided in the node. Nye Palette allows NIFs to have palletized internal textures, and triangle strips are an alternative to the usual triangle-based geometry. This allows OpenMW to properly load and display models from some very obscure mods. And from some very recent ones. One thing to note is that OpenMW doesn't need the INI file of Morrowind to work anymore, allowing game developers not to rely on proprietary content to make their game playable. Still, you should probably import Morrowind.ini to play Morrowind. We don't have any Ken Ralstons on board to write immersive level up and character generation messages. There are some new settings.cfg options as well. Distant Terrain is now configurable, allowing you to fine-tune its performance and look. You can have a casting animation play when you use enchanted items, disallowing you to exploit the ridiculousness of enchantment spamming. And Water Reflections now have more detail levels, allowing you to remove object reflections or even terrain reflections. To extend on the neat Distant Terrain settings, ever since Distant Terrain was added, it wasn't really pleasant to use, especially with province mods. This was due to the fact that the entire world map had to be loaded in some situations, which is a huge burden for most setups. Thanks to the generous efforts of Bzzt and Andrei Kartanov, Cell Transitions, Distant terrain generation, and rendering performance was streamlined, allowing you to have a smooth terrain LOD while traveling, even when you have half of Tamriel in your game. And now, finally, as promised in the previous release commentary video, I present to you the long-awaited Real-Time Shadows feature brought to you by Any Old Name 3 and others. The last OpenMW version with Ogre Shadows was 0.36.1, which came out in May of 2015. It seems like so long ago. Here's a couple comparisons of scenes under Ogre and under OSG. Notice how the old shadows reacted to the sun movement somewhat erratically? You can also see this oddity in later Bethesda games, such as Skyrim.
Unfortunately, unlike in Ogre releases, you can't yet enable them in the in-game settings, but you can do it in the launcher. Well, that's it folks. Thanks for watching and... Oh. What? Encore? Sure, why not? As we did last time, allow me to present an Encore featuring some of the next generation mod support the engine has in this release. Nye Switch Node support is quite versatile for making a node depend on certain game states. This is useful for making a pluginless replacement for glowing window mods. When a switch node is named Night Day Switch, the engine will set its state depending on the time of day and on whether the model is placed in an exterior or an interior. The same technique is used in the MWSE based Glow in the Dark mod and you can use assets that were made with it in mind. It's a wonderful touch to the look of any city. And it's useful for making a pluginless visual harvesting mod. The special functionality you see depends on herbalism switch named switch nodes used in modified natural container models. It's very similar technically to another MWSC mod Superstar's Graphic Herbalism from 2019, the assets from which are demonstrated in this footage, and this new pluginless herbalism has an exceedingly better performance compared to the old MW script based mod. A great opportunity for plant modelers. Up next, custom bones injection into an actor's skeleton and support for unique animations of various weapon types. These features make it possible for modders to enable weapon holstering in a scabbard next to their back or their hip and not in some oblivion pocket dimension, have them make use of quivers and, eventually, many other things. Oh yeah, there's also shield sheathing. These add something I never realized I was missing and it makes the game world feel so much more alive. Oh yes. There is more. In addition to what's just been mentioned, a quiver will be displayed on the character's back if they have arrows equipped. The number of arrows in the quiver depends on the number of equipped arrows. Of course, enchanted arrows will glow as expected. The quiver model is detected automatically based on the path to the bow or crossbow model, while arrows use the same models they use when you shoot them. Additionally, you can add animations to container models, and you don't need a plugin to make them play. While the classic Morrowind mod, Morrowind Containers Animated by QQQBBB, once relied on sound playback to work, this isn't a requirement for OpenMW's implementation of the feature. Note how the looting menu doesn't have to wait for the container to complete its animation before opening. Quite immersive. If you're a modder interested in adding support for this functionality into your mods, please take a look at the documentation for the usage of these new features provided on openmw.readthedocs.io. Another exciting major non-vanilla feature in this release is the support of the compressed BSA format from Oblivion, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, and the original 2011 Skyrim. This allows the engine to move one step closer towards being able to load assets of those games and their mods, and when it comes to Morrowind-focused interests, allows developers of huge mods to pack their assets into smaller archives, such as, ahem, <clears throat> landmass mods, hint hint. Okay folks, that's really it. For a complete list of fixes and features, please see the changelog at openmw.org. Until next time, thanks for watching and enjoy this peek at what's to come.